I found a ton of chickens on clearance at Walmart. I made them shelf stable. Let me show you how I did it with the freeze dryer. So not just because these were on clearance, but this is a quick and easy, so quick and easy freeze drying trick that you can do when you're trying to build up your pantry. Rotisserie chickens are often pretty inexpensive and you've, they've saved you all the time that you need to try to prepare your chicken. It's a quick process to take this apart, to put it in your freeze dryer, and then have shelf stable chicken to use anytime that you want. Hi, I'm Darcy from the Purposeful Pantry, in case we haven't met, and welcome to Freeze Dried February. And thanks to Angela from the Inquisitive Farm Life for inviting me along to this freeze dry February. We're here to learn about freeze drying from A to Z all month long. And don't worry, if you don't have a freeze dryer, there are going to be some videos for you too in learning how to use freeze dried foods just like at the end of this video. Be sure to check out the details of the giveaways happening later in this video. So let's get started. I was really grateful to walk into the grocery store that day and find a lot of these rotisserie chickens on clearance and I thought I have to freeze dry them. When you are trying to save money and build a shelf stable pantry, finding these clearance sales can be a big boost to your budget and future meals. While I wouldn't dehydrate this kind of chicken for our own meals, I could, I could do it for dog treats if I wanted to. So I'm taking the chickens apart, separating out the skin and the non-desirable non parts from bones from meat. I'm chopping all the meat into bite-sized pieces to be used for meals later, and the bones will go into broth. So basically what I have in my freezer is this little freezer shelf that I can put a pizza in if I need to, or I can put cookie sheets of foods that need to be flash frozen. So each of those bags of chicken were put in so that they'll freeze just like this. And hopefully that'll make it a little easier to put them on the trays where it's not one solid block. We'll see how that works, but I didn't have enough space to do everything all at once. So this is my time saving, hopefully a little uh, skill saving down the road. Okay, as you see what I'm doing is I am loading up now my tray with frozen chicken that I left in the freeze dryer overnight. It took about eight hours, nine hours probably. And then I let it sit on the counter for about five minutes to just thaw it enough so I could break up the chunks. I tried hard to get them to lay out flat uh, and, and I didn't uh, get it quite that way. But as you can see, this is easy enough to break up and my knife will go this, through this pretty easily when I get a chunk that's a little too big. I don't want to overpack the trays. You can hear the machine running, but I've got now four chickens in my freeze dryer. Pop it in right there. Close it up. So now we're going through the freezing process, which will take approximately four hours. And then I give it about 24 hours to go through the drying process to make sure it's good and done. Here we go. Freshly freeze dried chicken just out of the trays. About 24 hours. All right, here we go. Four trays, which is four chickens worth of freeze dried chicken. Snaps just like that. And surprisingly, this tastes just like rotisserie chicken. It's dry, obviously, much different than dehydrated, definitely. So what I do is the way I store my food, right into here. I'm not gonna bother weighing. This is dried way more than it needed to because I added extra time for me for the drying time to give me uh, time to get up this morning and take care of it. So it's plenty dry. I don't weigh mine because I don't do it. I'm not looking for meal portions that I have to remember how much it weighed to how much it didn't weigh to how to rehydrate it because I use this in meals. It doesn't matter for me, but you can do whatever you need to do. And we're gonna take these, finish up the jar. So I can get about two chickens into a quart jar. I'm in a half gallon jar, this is a half gallon. And if I make sure that I'm getting all of the extra space out. Okay, I can if I find like a piece is too large, I can break it in half and put it in. I went ahead and pre-marked my canning jar, jar lids before I do this, so I don't forget. As I'm loading, I should have taken a couple of pieces and put them in here, let them start rehydrating. All right, since this is exactly the same size as when it was fresh, um, 
it hasn't shrunk at all. I know that about two cups is about a pound. And typically we would use three cups for a meal for my family. So right there, that is one cup. So that's about two cups worth there left here. Nah, a cup and a half. So um, when I'm measuring this for a meal, I just know to use the exact same measurement as if I were doing for real. So two cups is about a pound of chicken. Um, so that's about what nah, a pound and a half, close to two pounds of chicken looks like when it's freeze dried right there. All right, so then next, let me get these on. So how I do this, because I don't like to use O2 absorbers. I am one of those people who just doesn't like them and it's okay. And because I'm not trying to store for 25 years, um, I store for the next two or three or four years. And so vacuum sealing works just fine for me. And vacuum sealing, like O2, perform pretty much the same function and this is good enough for me. And I don't use Mylar bags because, get that on correctly, I don't like using Mylar bags because if I don't see it, I'm not gonna use it and it will just get jumbled up in my pantry. So I'm gonna, I'm going to go ahead and vacuum seal mine. All right, now that I've got the lid on correctly, that's what was going on with that one. This is rehydrated chicken. This is a little dry because it was the breast. You can tell it's the white meat, but it looks just like it was fresh. And taste just like it was fresh. That's amazing. Because I know dehydrated chicken doesn't taste the same way. And that's why I love getting a freezer because I can put proteins up and this tastes just like fresh. This is amazing. Okay, so we go ahead and vacuum seal the rest of these. This is gonna be for dinner, but hold on, I've got more. Let's get ready for dinner, folks. It is one of my favorite meals I do. It's a fast food meal that I love to have, that it's cheap fast food that I have already jarred up and ready to go on the counter. Some of it is uh, purchased and some of it is homemade, obviously. So I put some broth into a hot skillet to let it get good. It's good, good and hot already to help the freeze dried chicken reabsorb a little faster. You want the good boiling heat that will help it go a little faster. And I'm just gonna let it sit here for a little while and reabsorb. So you see it's all of the, the broth is now gone and I'm going to add what I call my cheap fast food. They are tikka masala um, jars that I buy from the grocery store that make it so easy for me to throw a meal together on those nights when I have no time. And I can put this together in about 10 minutes. As long as it takes for that rice to cook, I'll have everything else ready. So I'll let this simmer a little bit just in the sauce and then I'm gonna add my secret ingredient. And here we go, green powder for the win. I put this stuff in almost everything we make. I do at least a tablespoon, if not two tablespoons in pretty much any meals that I cook on the stovetop or a casserole I put into the oven, into meatloaf, into eggs, into everything. Cause it's a good way for us to get those additional nutrients from greens that we don't tend to eat on their own unless we're having a salad or like putting fresh spinach on something. None of us really like cooked greens. So this is my secret weapon to get extra nutrition into everybody. And here what we're doing is preparing our dish. So I've got a bowl of rice and I'm adding some zucchini to it. And then I'm topping it with our tiki masala chicken mixture that's going right on top of all of it. And then it will be ready for dinner. And I'm telling you, this stuff is my favorite fast food. I love it so much. We have it a little too often, but I absolutely love it. So I hope you enjoyed watching how I freeze dried rotisserie chicken plus how to cook it. So if you're interested in the giveaways that are happening, here are some details. There's gonna be a prize from Harvest Right freeze dryers for 50% off of freeze dryer. Avid Armor is giving away a vacuum chamber sealer. Freeze drying supplies is giving away a ton of accessories. Four jars, ever as generous as they are, is giving away a hundred jarlets. And to be eligible for those prizes and more, you need to comment on all the videos throughout the entire month. The more you comment, the better chances you have. There's also gonna be a drawing on March 6th, a live drawing at 6 p.m. Central Time that will also give you some additional chances to win. And until I see you again next time, keep preserving. Okay, that was good enough. <laughs>